Hello YouTube. Welcome back to what has turned out to be a bit of a series on stack separation sorting, maybe an obsession. Immediately after I released my video on improved stack separation sorting, some discussion came up on the Storage Tech Discord about a 10 game tick stack sorter. At the same time, there were some posts made on Reddit about a 10 game tick stack separation sorter. So it seems that there's been quite a bit of interest in this mechanic and its applications. What you see behind me is a 10 game tick stack separator developed by Fefa and Unnerving based on an original design by Hexatron. So there's a lot of people working on similar concepts and trying to uh, improve this concept. Let's take a quick look at how this thing works. Okay, so this is not self-activating, it is clock-based, so if you were to use this for any actual real-live examples, you'd have to set up a timer for your clock for any items incoming. But let's place in a few different items here. We'll make sure that we are aligned, and I'll do 9. And we should be completely aligned there. We look good. We are going to do our tick freeze. And we do have extreme behaviors on. Um, always testing anything with item entities with that on. Let's turn this clock on and count through here. So tick, step. We'll go one at a time. So we are activated. Trapdoor has triggered. Let's count from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You'll notice that in that 10th game tick, the pressure plate came off of cooldown and re-triggered in the same game tick, which then reset the trap door and will now let through, I believe it'll be that yellow concrete right there in the next tick. You can watch this whole thing cycle through and we want to make sure that we turn it off afterwards again because we are on a clock. But this just goes to prove that 10 game tick can be done on a single stream. I took the timings from this system and decided to apply it to my self-starting uh, 11 game tick design uh, to see if we could just speed it up uh, a little bit. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, here is my 10 game tick design with the same stack separation filters, blacklisters, whatever you want to call them, that were designed by Glotz. They just happen to also work at 10 game ticks. The big change here in this system is that we're not using the dust cutting method here. Uh, it seems that the dust cut method wouldn't operate at 10 game ticks, probably because it required an update to turn off as well as back on so you needed two updates where this just needs the the one to turn off and it self resets on its own so this will work at 10 game ticks and we will count it through so i have in here right now uh four different item types for these filters i think i'm sorting for each one let's just make sure these filters are set up correctly yeah that looks good looks good Looks good. So everything should get sorted into the chests below. Let's go ahead and, and put this through. So there. You'll see now that we're operating. Let's count it through. Freeze. Step. And we'll count from the next time the trapdoor and pressure plate trigger, which should be right here. Okay, so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, 9, 10. Came off of cooldown, reactivated, and we've now let that next item entity through. So and you'll see the filters that are working here on 10 game ticks as well. If we do a quick warp, let's do 500, that might be enough. Uh, not hope. Oh, definitely not enough. We will warp again for a thousand. Let's see if we get uh, the right numbers of stacks for each of these things here. Oh, we're almost done. We don't need to bother warping that, I don't think. 
we'll just let that finish up. We're done. And we've processed. So, there we go. Three stacks of yellow concrete, three of redstone blocks, two of our note blocks, and one of our observers. Nothing would have trashed at the end. That is 10 game ticks. I mentioned also some development um, that was posted to the R Redstone community by a user named Noob in Hell. And he was showing off a four, five, or six game tick stack separator based on a concept that was shared by a YouTuber named Meiyoji Yen back in September, which was shortly after Methods and Boyen developed their stack separation. This method using fence gates is the inverse of the trapdoor stack separation, where trapdoors will stop all but one item, the fence gates stop only one item, allowing all the other entities to pass through. So you can actually split multiple stacks on one pass, and then on the return, split out any remaining stacks again. In my first attempt, I was able to build a 3.25 game tick stack separator. This separates eight different stacks out in 26 game ticks. I did not build in the self-activating mechanism, but we can load in a bunch of different item types here to see how quickly this actually separates stacks. You'll also notice that once they're separated, I haven't done anything with them because this was mostly just a proof of concept to start messing around with the fence gate method. So let's dump a bunch of different item types here. We will trigger the alignment. Trap door should be closed. So we're now aligned to the proper edges. And let's drop it. There. So you'll see on each pass, we're separating four one way, four the other way. 13 game ticks in each direction for 26. And on eight separations in 26 game ticks is 3.25 items per game tick separations per game tick. So, knowing this, and knowing that the output at that speed is way too fast for hoppers to handle, so you would need some other method to collect them below, I decided to kind of break even in between, and rather than focusing on a 10 game tick stack separator or a 3.25 game tick stack separator, I shot for 8 game ticks. This way, our output, if we put it into a single stream, we could run it over some filters and actually manage the, the flow of items that are coming out. So let's go take a look at my eight game tick stack separator. Okay, here it is. The whole thing in all its glory. We have nine different sorters or blacklisters attached to this with just a burn at the end. Um, we have the self-activating mechanism in place here. We are aligning to the, the proper output at the end. So we're taking care of splitting and alignment all so we can start sorting these items. I'm gonna use just random items to start here. So let's, uh, let's just dump a bunch in and you'll see this thing in play. Everything will get burnt to the end unless it randomly generates one of the eight that we're sorting for here. There. So what I'm using here is a 16 game tick cycle um, in each direction for a total of 32. So we're doing two separations on the first pass, two separations on the second. So four separations over the course of 32 game ticks, which is our eight game tick separation uh, per item entity. So there, it's finished up everything it needed to do. All of those items would have gotten burned. So there's a, there's a lot that's actually happening here. So we have our item entity detector for the first bounce. It triggers the second bounce and aligns to the chest so that it's aligned properly for the pressure plates and the fence gates. We then have another item entity detector that will reset on a 32 game tick cycle. So that's what all of these repeaters are here for. It'll reset the CUD and then allow it to push items out again after 32 game ticks. We do our passes. We then trigger this pressure plate, which will 
set the right timings to return the items after 16 game ticks. It'll also trigger this little bouncy mechanism, which will pull the gates out of the way so they don't get touched by the slime, and it'll push them to align against this chest. So that'll just get triggered by this, and that gets triggered from each side. So you'll see we have a trigger here, so it'll bounce on the first pass, and we have a trigger here, so it'll bounce on the second pass. We needed a one game tick offset here, so that's what this scaffolding is for. Uh, I believe it's created probably from um, maybe this piston somewhere. I actually don't know, but to get it to work, we had to add an extra game tick in here on that clock. So 16 one direction, 16 in the other direction. Once we've dropped down, we're using a shifting floor to align the items to this bounce down so that we can then bounce them along. So we're, we've got an alignment here, we're shifting items at eight game ticks, and then we're bouncing them out into um, the stack sorters. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on here. Um, this was quite a bit of work to time everything out properly. You'll notice also that there is no redstone dust. The only redstone dust that I'm using is this one right here. Uh, which will blink on and off. Um, could probably put it to uh, one signal strength, but I don't think it matters much. This redstone dust will change shape, but does not actually change its power level. So just the one here for that um, eight game tick uh, item entity detector. So let's um, let's make sure that it is on eight game ticks. So we're gonna take just yellow concrete this time and we're going to watch it go through to the sorter so there let's see we've got some items coming through and you'll notice these are the same stack sorters that glots developed for the 11 game tick system they just happen to work at 10 and they happen to work at 8 as well which is fantastic so kudos to Glotz on, on building something that was so dynamic. I will mention that your your sorters or your blacklisters can't be any closer than its current position. Uh, any closer and they will not work. So any filters from this point back, not going to work. You've got to push outwards. So let's just turn this off right now because we've got proof that we're working at 18 ticks and everything's aligned. And it's still sorting through. Oh, I put a lot of stacks in there. Let's uh, let's just tick warp that until it's done, maybe. I guess I was putting one out every every game tick. Okay, so we're done. Let's clear this up. Let's pull all those out. That is a lot of yellow concrete. Good. And come on, there we go. Okay, now we're going to replace with this dropper here, which has nine different item types in it, including our 16 stackables. And we're going to put it in place right here. Hopefully I can get that properly. That looks good. All right, so let's watch this whole thing working with multiple item types. We're going to get some some stacking that occurs naturally as those items are dropping in, but you know, ideally this replicates a, uh, a bartering station or some sort of farm that you want to uh, use this with. I think in the last video I mentioned that the plan was Glotz was going to use this for a gold farm. Uh, I must have had gold on the brain. The plan is to use this for a bartering station for the high volume of, of entities that are output from that. So. Things are looking good here so far. Tick warp. We'll do 1500. And we'll make sure that. There we go. We're good. Turn that off. Let's see what we got down below. 64. 64. 64. Look at all that. Everything sorted where it should have been. And that is advanced stack separation sorting at eight 
game ticks, nether friendly, self-activating, and uh, yeah, I hope I hope people can find a use for this as as with anything else that that I've worked on. Um, I'm happy to see the the attention that this stuff gets. So again, last uh, couple shout outs to Methods and Boyan for discovering the item separation method, uh, to Mayoji Yan for the fence gate method, um, for uh, Fefa, Hexatron, and Unnerving for their development on the storage tech server, as well as Noob and Hell on the Reddit community uh, for posting his designs uh, and and everyone you know, working on this thing together. So thanks again, YouTube, and have a great day.